I yield back. Gentleman's time's expired. Chair now recognizes uh, Ms. Brown. It looks like your name. Ms. Brown for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The American people have lost track of your supposed investigation of President Biden, or is it an investigation of his son who does not and has never worked at the White House or another family member? We can't even follow which investigation we're discussing today. Is it the FBI, the IRS, XXX, or something new? I know the American people are confused because we're all confused what we're doing here. Nothing this majority has claimed about the president or his family has merit. No wonder the folks back home are tuning out of this confused mess. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle have shredded all their credibility in this committee. They simply grasp at straws that do not exist. In this Congress so far, we've held more hearings on gas stoves than gun violence and culture wars than kitchen table issues. So let's talk about the real two-tier justice system, the one in which big corporations pollute the air we breathe and the big banks cause meltdowns with their negligence and not one person is held criminally liable. They're certainly not called by the majority to sit before this committee. Or, Mr. Chairman, what if we talked about the other unspoken two-tier justice system in this country, the one where people of color are subject to a deliberately harsher system at every turn, from policing to prison to parole. In this country, a black person is five times more likely to be stopped without due cause than a white person. And black defendants are 25% more likely to be held pre-trial. Meanwhile, the twice indicted former president is out campaigning around the country and didn't even have to post bail. Yet hundreds of thousands of Americans sit behind bars waiting for their day in court. These are the types of lived experiences we should be addressing in this oversight committee. This is the real two-tiered justice system, and it's the justice system Democrats are trying to fix after four years of Donald Trump's misuse. Congressional Republicans, however, are working to make these inequalities worse through their efforts to defund the IRS and other Democratic priorities included in the Inflation Reduction Act. So since my colleagues claim to want stricter IRS enforcement, you would think we would at least agree on giving the IRS its proper funding. So let me conclude by asking a simple question, Mr. Shapley, yes or no? Do you know the rate at which black taxpayers are audited as compared to taxpayers who are not black? No, I don't know. Well, the answer is black taxpayers are audited at 2.9 to 4.7 times the rate of non-black taxpayers. Another question for you, sir. Yes or no? Will this hearing help alleviate the racial disparity in the rates of the IRS audits? Uh, no. That's not the topic. Thank you. And with that, I, I, with the yield. Yield. Yeah. I will yield the balance of my time to the ranking member. No, thank you kindly and for your excellent questioning and statement there. Um, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, when he was here, invited us to believe that the U.S. Attorney for Delaware had changed his tune or changed his story. But when you um, look at the letters he actually sent, um, he didn't change his tune at all. He said the exact same thing every time and even expanded uh, the uh, answer to be perfectly clear. In his June 7th letter, he says, I've been granted ultimate authority over this matter, including responsibility for deciding where, when, and whether to file charges and for making decisions necessary to preserve the integrity of the prosecution consistent with federal law, the principles of federal prosecution, and departmental regulations. In other words, it's up to him. It's up to the U.S. Attorney. Then, in June 30, the letter to the Chairman Jordan, he says, second, in my June 7th letter, I stated, quote, I have been granted ultimate authority over this matter, including responsibility for deciding where, when, and whether to file charges, et cetera. Unquote, I stand by what I wrote and wish to expand on what this means. And this gets to the heart, I think, of what we're doing here today. As the U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware, my charging authority is geographically limited to my home district. If venue for a case lies elsewhere, 
common departmental practice is to contact the U.S. Attorney's Office for the district in question and determine whether it wants to partner on the case. If not, I may request special attorney status from the Attorney General pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 515. Here I've been assured that if necessary, I would be granted Section 515 authority in the District of Columbia, the Central District of California, or any other district where charges could be brought in this matter. Okay, and it is the difference, as Ms. Ocasio-Cortez was saying, between special counsel and special attorney, which might explain the confusion or the disagreement here. In any event, the U.S. Attorney for Delaware had all of the authority he needed to bring whatever charges he wanted, wherever he wanted, and he is the witness for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chair, and I'll yield back to the gentleman. I, I would like to be clear that he was assured that authority. He was assured Yes, he was, and he, he said he was assured the authority. And he is jurist, he is limited within Delaware. Well, the right, but that's just the rules. Delaware. You're just restating what the rules are. That's what he explained. That's you're not a lawyer, right? You don't work in the Department of Justice, correct? He's explaining what the uh, rules are. Gentlemen, gentlemen's time's expired. Okay. Uh, chair recognizes Dr. Fox from North Carolina for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.